This lesson deals with a nodal analysis example, which has one voltage source. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter three, starting on page seven. Given a circuit with one voltage source and five resistors, can you solve for the voltage V sub X and V sub Y? We're gonna use the same five-step algorithm we used in the previous example. And the first step is to select a reference node. Now let's do this very carefully. With a voltage source, I know the value of the voltage. So I could pick this as a reference node or this as a reference node. I'm also solving for V sub Y. So if I were to pick this as my reference node, I would already know one of the node voltages and there'd be just two more to solve for. Let's do that. We'll pick that as our reference node. The second step in the algorithm is to define the node voltages. So I'll call this node voltage one, node voltage two, and node voltage three. And I'll label that V1, V2, and V3, plus sign by the node voltage and the minus sign by the ground symbol. I'm gonna have three nodes, but I know one of the three node voltages. So I just have to solve for two unknown node voltages. Third step is to apply Kirchhoff's current law at each node in our circuit. But if we sum the currents at this voltage source node, the current that comes out of here is another unknown. Let's not pick that node. Since I only need to have two equations to solve this, I'll pick the nodes that don't have a voltage source hooked up to it. I next need to assign a current to each element. Since the node voltages have a defined polarity plus and minus, this will be the current then for the 250 ohm resistor and likewise for the 500 ohm resistor. Now the current in the 1K, the other 1K and the 250 ohm, I can pick arbitrarily. Pick I1 in this direction, I3 in this direction, and I4 in this direction. Pick them the other way, the answer I'll get will be the opposite sign. So now let's do Kirchhoff's current law at the nodes where we can write an Ohm's law expression. I'll sum the currents at node two. I1 is entering, I2 is leaving, I3 is leaving. But what is I1? Well, because of this direction, we're implying a polarity in this direction, by Ohm's law. It's gonna be node voltage one, which we know to be five volts, minus node voltage two, which is one of our unknowns, divided by one K. The current I2 is just simply V2 divided by 250. And the current in this other one K resistor is node voltage two, minus node voltage three divided by one K. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by 1000. So then I get rid of this. This becomes then four. This just becomes one times that. Five minus V2, four times V2, and then V2 minus V3. This side of the equation, I'll leave the five. I'll bring the V2 on this side. I get another added one and another one. So I get six V2 and then minus V3. Two unknowns are V2 and V3. I have one equation and two unknowns. I need one more equation. Let's do that at node three. Node three, I3 is entering. I4 is leaving and I5 is leaving. What's I3? Well, we just found that. That's V2 minus V3 divided by 1K. Current for I4 being in this direction implies the voltage is this way with Ohm's law. It's gonna be V3 minus V1 divided by 250. And then lastly, the current in 500 ohm resistor called I5 is gonna be V3 divided by 500. And all this is shown here below. So I3 is equal to I4 plus I5. Let's multiply through by 1,000. That's gonna make this just one, V2 minus V3. This will be multiplying this begin by four, four V3, four times five is minus 20. To get two times V3. Put the 20 on this side of the equation, bring the V2 on this side, there's just one of them, so minus V2, and then another plus V3 and another plus V3, so I get four plus two plus another one, so I get seven. What's interesting to note here is that on the left-hand side of the equation is our five volt source, or our five volt source multiplied by a scalar. Talk some more about this on the next page and a little later in the chapter. Let's take these equations and put them in matrix form. Our first equation is five is equal to six times V2 minus one times V3. Second equation is 20 is equal to minus one times V2 plus seven times V3. Step four is to solve for the unknown node voltages but we only need to solve for V3 because we're only trying to solve for V sub X and V sub Y. Go back and look at the original drawing. V sub X is across the 250 ohm resistor. That's the difference of V1 and V3. And the voltage V sub Y was equal to node voltage three. I just have to solve for one of the two unknown node voltages. Take a ratio of determinants. I have the matrix with six minus one, minus one and seven. I'm gonna replace the column associated with V3, which is actually the second column put the five and the 20 in the place of column two of our original matrix. Find the determinant then it's six times 20 minus a minus one times five. 
and that turns out to be 125. In the denominator, it's 6 times 7 minus a minus 1 times a minus 1. That turns out to be 42 minus 1, so you get 41. That's 3.0488 volts. Step 5 is to complete the problem. So V sub Y is V3 is equal to 3.0488 volts. V sub X is V1 minus V sub Y, but we knew that V1 was 5 volts. And V sub Y we just solved for. And the difference is 1.95122. Okay, I want the answer in your notation with the appropriate unit. But just some observations. In example C, where we had two current sources, and example D, where we had one voltage source, we saw the left-hand side of the equation was either that current source directly, or the voltage source, or the voltage source times the scalar. That makes sense in the sense that we are solving for unknown voltages and currents, and what's known would be on the left-hand side of the equation if we wrote it as we wrote our matrices. I'm going to use this idea to prove a very powerful analysis technique in section 3.5. And this is an example of node voltage analysis with a voltage source.